You call yourself an artist. On what ground? Drown, baby, drown. Download the One Page Spotlight app for artists. Uh, uh, Dr. Hari Singh, you have already shared about the medium of awareness and connect with the real stories and raising uh, collaboration among artists and artists and artisans. So, um, how um, easy has been for you, or how how has been your experience in uh, trying to connect with them through the digital platform? You know, when you are trying to connect with your artist uh, with Art Mantram, uh, how? Um, inclusive they are or how welcoming they are in terms of putting their artwork across digital platform what is there is there any apprehension is there any any worry or is are they very welcoming on that part um of course uh, uh, artists are very welcoming because uh, we have got a long uh, long history so uh, earlier i mean our init the initial artists uh, with art mantram were like anjali ilam and then jatin das sunil das um, uh, you know uh, people like that rameshwar bruta these are all the uh, veterans of uh, art of the country so these were the people who used to come to um, come to our art shows art camps and you know visit art camps and uh, so therefore because of that connection and people uh, youngsters at that point of time like lal dakar and all the other people who were connected with lal dakar academy and the um, art school delhi art school i was in delhi posted in delhi at that time delhi art school and things like that used to come uh, as soon as we just send out a message they used to come in any case they used to come and socially we'll have social gatherings with artists and we used to have art shows and things like that so therefore we never had any problem i mean artists are all the time coming to us for support and help and to be included in the art shows now also we are a catalog of uh, 100 artists artists who are not notable you know, they are all living artists and not very very um, very senior artists uh, these are notable artists 100 notable artists of india or artists to watch out for so i mean people are uh, there is a great rush please so the jury is hard put to to select whom to include and whom not to include kind of a thing so we never had because of that since we have been um, in the domain from 1999 and we do not we are not a commercial gallery we are not a um, we are not a commercial uh, auction house but we do things very gently whatever we can do to help the artists and everybody knows that we are putting in our effort and money and everything into this and we do not take anything right. and uh, so therefore that kind of that kind of integrity everybody sees in the functioning of art mantram and every everybody sees that kind of dedication so perhaps we perhaps of that so we want to do something not only that art um, uh, artists are sharing their uh, sharing their work and asking us urging us to do more and more shows and art camps and things like that not only that uh, consequent i should share this with gratitude here that after we started this art soup thing we are all old people we do not know much about technology and things like that we know gen you know in general general knowledge only but these artists uh, educated artists like you people Mm, they are volunteering they are coming forward and saying ma'am please let us help you to help other artists i think that is a beautiful sentiment you know i mean coming from the artists so this is now a network of those 40 artists who have worked together and they are always willing to do all the all the work of instagram and all the things promotional work they say that don't worry about it because we had in the, when we did this art soup thing we didn't take any money at all it if if uh, an art work got sold the, all the money went to the artist so they feel that these people are working so hard and making such a beautiful show 
we not only have a show, but the presentation, the inauguration, we have a very big uh, function. And we had called Sujada Bajaj from Paris who talked to them. And then we spotlighted each of the artists and we made, um, we made video clips of each of the artists wherever we can and things like that on our own. So people are so moved and so uh, uh, affectionate and loving and wanting to help us. So uh, here, what I have to mention is that we have had very good experience with the artist community, no problem at all. I am aware that everybody is temperamental. So I tell them that I am temperamental. As an artist, I can say that I'm temperamental and I can handle them. I would like to take this opportunity to tell the artist community as well as the panelists that if you people ha have any ideas that you would like to incubate with an organization, uh, which is a not-for-profit not not organization, we may not have all the nice ideas, we may not have modern uh, technology, but then we would like to collaborate and cooperate with any of you. And if we can have, uh, we can uh, derive a win-win situation on any aspect of art. Our I think I will money. never lose this opportunity to uh, say that, you know, uh, we in One Piece Spotlight, where we are, uh, this discussion which we is going on right now is a part of our Art Nirbhar Bazaar initiative. And we have a very, very interesting and very unique uh, feature in our platform, which is the Blue Store. And uh, in this Art Bazaar initiative, the Blue Store will play a very important role where each and every artist participating artists and artisans will be showcasing their work through their blue store. And we are doing this similar. You have already shown us the way Dr. Harris Singh and we are just following you. We are a startup and we need your support and guidance as well. Every one of us, because it is a journey of being together. It's not, it cannot be done by one single person. As you rightly say, collaboration and support and joining hands together is very, very important in today's time and together we can definitely bring in a change and that change is very very important for uh, for us who are passionate about our work and we wanted to showcase our work and we wanted to show it to the world that there is always a brighter side ahead so yes we will be we uh, this is just the beginning and this conversation will lead to lots of interactions in the coming days where We'll be regularly keeping in touch with you and taking see that you know we go for concrete steps and um, way ahead in terms of our work. Um, thank you for your inputs. And uh, again, now uh, moving uh, ahead with, I'd like to put a question to Kapil and understand from you about uh, the pricing and uh, about the buyers. Uh, way of looking at the spending powers of the art buyers in today's market as you come from an art gallery perspective. Again, it is, it's very important for all of us. We wanted to put our products over there. We wanted people to take it home and uh, put them as a part of their life and showcase it in their, in their living rooms and in their own places. But uh, what is our understanding about the uh, spending power of the art buyers and from a completely from a business perspective, if you can share some light on the subject, uh, I think uh, Kapil, it will be great to hear from you. Hi, uh, yes, you are saying absolutely right that everybody has a pocket to spend yes. and there is a market for each and every, there is a proverb in the carpet market that uh, there is a house for each and every carpet which is produced. So as, as like that, there is a house or a wall for each and every painting which is to be, which is creating by artists or any sculpture, but uh, the market is having their own uh, their own taste and every buyer has their own taste as well as we have a market for each and every kind of artwork either it is uh, artisan's work or I, or it is a work costing from 5000 till 20 crores 25 crores we have the market and we just have to concentrate on the prospective buyer because at that point uh, you require some guidance that to which we have to contact or to which we have to concentrate for their own artwork thank you uh, thank you i think uh, that's that's very very uh, rightly put across and now i think uh, 
I will take to Jay to ask a very, very important uh, understanding from his perspective is about the presence of uh, digital media and as an artist, the presence in social media and in digital media, how important it is. And in a, in a time like this, where everything uh, is, uh, is becomes an influential positioning in terms of social media positioning. So how do Absolutely. you look at it? So uh, in order to understand the importance of social media today, we have to go actually way back when, we have to go back to the 20th century at the start. Um, Kandinsky came out with this thing called the Blue Rider Almanac. Okay, um, He put it together in such a way that you would have traditional folk, uh, folk arts and you would have modern art next to it, or the contemporary art of the time, uh, at least uh, next to it. Poetry, uh, articles, ideas, everything put there, and it would be distributed. Okay, so people would pick it up, they would read it, they would get some kind of understanding of, oh, this is what is currently happening, this is where one can go and see it, etc. Some some kind of spreading of knowledge. You would see posters being put uh, in different places, so people would see it. In the modern age, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, these are all just things like that. There are ways to get your artwork out there to be seen, um, in very accessible ways. Now, right. before we come to Instagram and we come to all the modern social media that we have, I want to take a step back to deviant art. In 2006, 2007, when I started out, that was the first place I uploaded my work. And I got to know this very, very strong set of people, this community that we built in Bombay. Okay. And then across India as well. But in Mumbai, we had this very tight-knit community and we're all friends still today. We still share our art with each other. And we still use each other as community contacts to reach out to show our work to other people. It was a beautiful setup. As social media changed, we started using more individualistic platforms and profiles to reach out to people and to curate our own communities. Now, we all got Google accounts at some point in the mid 2000s, everyone switched to Google. And then you all realize like me, that when you go onto YouTube, that's also your YouTube handle. You're also getting a YouTube channel the minute you have a Google uh, login or an email ID. Now, I saw that as an opportunity started off there. I was like, great, this will be a fun thing to do because YouTube's fun today. It's a great way for me to tell the story of art. My YouTube channel has two or three different playlists that I put together. I started vlogging my life as an artist in 2016. And then I slowly switched to slightly more, uh, let's call it cinematic styles recently. But I was like, you know what? I'm doing printmaking. Why can't I showcase the process of printmaking? The different types of prints, the carving process. A lot of videos online don't show how to safely carve. So I was like, if I can just showcase how I'm doing the carving, people will pick up on it. They'll start carving slightly safer, right? They'll see the inks I'm using, the press I'm using, the way I'm doing things, all these different ways of getting the word out there. So alongside the direct influence you have with your Instagram and your Twitter, you also have slower mediums like YouTube, which are very, very important to putting yourself out there and finding a new market but also educating people simultaneously. As an artist, it's also your responsibility to educate the people about your art instead of just showing them your art. Context, like we've been discussing all day today, is key. If you don't put the context out there, people don't have a clue. Right Now, pulling all of that to one side, when you come down to your Instagram and you come down to your Twitter, to your Facebook, it has to be curated. Now, when one page spotlight comes into the picture, digital platforms like this come into the picture. It's more curated, it's less effort because you are doing the work for us. You're giving us a platform where you're saying, you give me the content, I'll put it together for you. And then we'll run a marketing uh, run on it. People can come to one site, buy the thing. You just have to worry about shipping it. Back. So these platforms, as we go further and further, become more and more important because it's easier than the artist doing all of the work, all of the time, trying to manage it. I have a website. I've still not put uh, an e-commerce section to it because I can't manage that also. I'm a full-time educator. 
I'm a full-time artist. I'm also a full-time marketing person for myself to manage the social media. I also then have to film and edit for my YouTube channel. How do I then manage the e-commerce side of things? Right. It's okay. too much for one person to do. So using platforms like a one-page spotlight will make life a lot easier for the artist, but keeping the social media alive and curating the content being put out so that it tells a story, right, is very, very important. Being able to monetize the content you're putting out there, even in subtle ways, is important. To be able to create deals with, let's say, uh, art supply stores. It's important because at that point, you're not just serving yourself, but you're also serving the artist community around you right. by saying, you can now get a deal on this if you use my reference which means I'm helping that particular brand market themselves. I'm getting some sops from them, either a discount code or uh, a certain set of art supplies. I've done something a uh, couple of years back with uh, Faber Castell, where they said, we just want you to create one video where you take any object that you want, but you use our materials and you paint on it and you showcase. Right. Because I did that, it also taught other creators in my circle that these deals can be made and you can also build something around that so it, it becomes important to diversify at the same time your uh, your fan base your loyal uh, followers we it's a way of validating your uh, absolutely product so i think when it comes to the point i'll take up that point and just wanted to take it further saying that you know in terms of validating because now also when you look at the online space, there are lots of uh, art products available. So now, uh, from a buyer's perspective, you know, it is very important that you, you know that, okay, you are buying the right product. It's that validation is a very, very important. Absolutely. Part. Absolutely. You know, you have, uh, uh, stuff altogether over there, but you, you really need to see that, you know, there is a proper validation, proper curation and proper uh, authentication is always there. So uh, how do you see, uh, it's it's to all of you, I mean, I wanted to put this question to all of you and wanted to have your perspective on it that, you know, would you, would you buy an artwork if it is validated by uh, a particular, uh, uh, by the social media platform or by any accredited body or how, how do you look at when you buy a product and what what is it that, that plays a very important role in, in so personally, I'd just like to make a distinction here in terms of the commercial products we buy and the artwork we buy. I love buying and collecting art myself, right? You can see there's a little still life in the background there. Um, the the guest uh, that we have here, Sanjvi, she's actually the creator of it. She's an ex-student of mine. And the minute she made it, I fell in love with it. Now, that's what I'm going to look for when I buy an artwork. Have I fallen in love with it? Yes. It doesn't matter what platform it's on, who's validating it or anything. If I can see the artwork, fall in love with it, know that I need it in my life and be able to communicate with the artist, that's all. Okay. Uh, right. Kapil, does it happen uh, in your side also when people come to your uh, gallery and they try to uh, select something or uh, try to look at any of your artwork and uh, what is the approach? Uh, if you can just share your thoughts on it. Uh, I, uh, I guess we, uh, Kapil is not. Hey, Marl, why? Hello. I think uh, Ramesh's yeah, mic yeah. is on. You might want to mute. Yeah, him yeah. For the moment. Yes, yes. So mic is on. Uh, Ramesh is muted. Okay. Yeah, I think it's muted. Yeah. Okay. Uh, fine. Uh, so uh, yes, we have um, we have almost touched. Um, most of the important points that we I have uh, put it across and we wanted to discuss about. Now, um, first of all, thank you all our um, uh, audience and uh, participants. You know, you have been patiently listening to all of us and the very uh, interesting conversation that has been going through for the last almost two and a half hours, if I have to be precise in timing. It is 529 right now. <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, I would like to open the floor up to all of you and uh, ask you if you can just uh, unmute your uh, mic also. Uh, 
switch on your uh, cameras so that we can see all of you and then we can take forward one by one if those questions because you have put lots of questions in, in the chat box i would like you to put your put across your questions and we can take one by one yeah hi i uh, had a question uh please hi can you hear me yes yes we can hear you please go ahead yeah uh, what about yeah what what about the digital uh, media or the artists who are digital artists like I being one, you know, converted into digital art full time. So would the, we have been talking about all the physical products and the physical paintings and, you know, so would these, I've been trying to connect it to my, uh, you know, my processes and my concepts and my ways of handling uh, my projects. Most of them, uh, they do work like that. Uh, but then what are your takes on it? Like from the panel, I would want to. Uh, from the digital side of things, uh, most of the digital things I do at least, uh, it works in the same way. It comes down to defining what the actual product is, what the outcome is meant to be, and uh, then working with the client to figure out how they want to take delivery of it, uh, what the timelines are, and uh, what the medium of choice is going to be. Um, so, for example, if I'm doing a video edit for someone or I'm putting together uh, or writing a story for them or a script for them, um, I don't need to be physically there. It's something I can do digitally and send it across to them. So a timeline is set um, and accordingly, it's all worked out with the contract so that uh, nobody is pulling too hard in either direction. A uh, certain number of iterations are put into the contract as well. So I'm not sitting and working with 16 iterations over something that can be settled in three. All right. Uh, thank you, Jay. Uh, in the meantime, uh, in our chat box, we have a few questions as well. Uh, there's a question for Purvi saying that, you know, Purvi, you have mentioned uh, the name of few books. If you can just uh, send it across to us, we will make it sure that when this video is going uh, public, we will put uh, sure. the body of the content where your, the name of the books will be mentioned. And during so I can just quickly mention it again as well, if someone just wants to note it down. Yes. Or, or would you prefer me to type it out in the chat box? If you can, if you can just uh, type it out uh, for us uh, so that we can take it forward. From you. Okay, sure. Okay. Uh, uh, many questions are there uh, asking about, uh, I think, uh, Ankita, your question is uh, to talk about, uh, you wanted to know the official handle of uh, all the panelists so it will be available in one page spotlight please do connect with us at one page spotlight and follow us in our facebook instagram as well as the main platform and you will get all the information over there thank you vinita ji you are liked uh, the conversation you said it's a, it's a very insightful session and you really liked the discussion uh, thank you for joining us and uh, being a part of today's discussion and is there anyone who would like to uh, put uh, forward any questions? Uh, we've got a couple of questions uh, that, that have come in. Uh, one is, uh, what is the right way to get commission work? Yes. Um, Purvi, do you want to take this? Uh, sure. Um, so I think um, it goes in alliance with what I've already mentioned. Um, put out your work and then if, uh, you know, on whatever platform, it could be Facebook, Instagram, one page spotlight, whatever. Um, but then when someone contacts you for a commission, you ideally um, need to understand what their expectations are of you and also what you would like to deliver. Because a lot of times uh, commission works require some sort of modification or alteration to what you've existed, done already. So you need to kind of chalk out a plan and based on the kind of trust and understanding that you have with the other person um, you have in writing, it doesn't, I don't personally believe in contracts too much because either you have an understanding or you don't and either it works or doesn't because no one's going to go legally after something and spend that kind of time and money. So you kind of need to get a sense whether things are working out for you generally or not. And then you kind of outline what your steps are going to be, what your deadlines are going to be, uh, if you are going to be sending out uh, some sort of, um, you know, a plan of action to the person. So if it's even a painting, you know, and they've requested for certain colors or a certain style of yours, 
whether they need a sort of a preliminary drawing or plan or points of reference which you're using and then keep them involved in the process but then there are sometimes you have these really wonderful commissions where people kind of tell you you know do what you'd like to but i would still suggest that you put down things in writing just in case you know there's some sort of a misunderstanding later and make the prices competent uh make it very clear explain to them what the mode of billing will, will be and create a proper bill you know and uh, also possibly give a certificate of authentication with your stamp and signature on it um so this is these are some basic steps of how to go about commissions um and how to get commissions i mean it's the same as getting a show you just put your work out there and then you see what comes to you uh you showcase it on platforms like one page spotlight behance uh, or if it's a video based uh, work you know it's a film based work you have vimeo youtube all of these other platforms so you kind of need to see what works best for you and keep circulating it i also have like three broadcast lists on my whatsapp to share you know when i'm speaking somewhere or if i have an upcoming show uh if i want to you know update people about uh, some sort of new work that i've done or links to my show you know i put out a common message so you have to be very organized about it and uh, time is key you know you're going to organize you're doing your work you're spreading it you're going to get commissions uh thanks purvi uh, i have one more query regarding commission work um sure. yeah i wanted to know Oh, like uh, about the pricing because i did commission work uh, recently and i am a budding artist like i just started in during lockdown so i don't have a prior knowledge of uh, all this art uh, artwork so uh, i just wanted to know how to price my artwork so that uh, i don't feel uh, uh, neither like either ways like it should not be valued uh, and it should not be like uh, people should approach me also so how to fix a pr proper price um i think pricing is something very personal to each person you kind of need to uh, first uh, understand or acknowledge uh, you know why you are selling the work are you selling it because uh, you need the money or is it more for your love of art and then you would like to spread it and also be acknowledged for it and uh, your yeah, art should be viewed so for example if someone is making their living out of um just selling works or maybe they have a you know maybe something they're saving up for or some sort of a particular need you already will know how much you want to make and uh, the kind of time that you have and then you need to be reasonable with yourself about your skill level and where you stand you know in general um and i would say you know whether you're educated uh, from a fine art school or whether you're a self taught artist the first thing is to make your art affordable so that it is consumed it's not sitting in your own home or even if a gallery buys it you know it's not sitting in their back store so your work should be viewed and your work should be seen and you know um so make your prices affordable um i can't say there is a set standard um that you know if you are a self taught artist who has been doing this for let's say the past 6 months and your canvas size is x y and z this is what your price should be worked at uh priced at i don't believe in that in fact i don't even believe in the per square foot pricing that a lot of artists are asked to kind of uh, you know keep in the professional art world as well like a lot of galleries or uh, you know are will price your works based on per square foot and so obviously bigger paintings would be more expensive smaller ones less and they will also compare you know what are other artists works price that depending on their level of experience and then compare that okay you know uh, does the pricing sit well uh, in in terms of their experience and you know um their kind of uh, market value i don't really believe in that i think that a small piece of work can be a lot better and more important for career and work and i would maybe sell it for more because there there might have been like it might have been a breakthrough work you know a really small piece of work um but with since you're a self taught artist and it's new and if you don't really have the need for money for something for your livelihood i would suggest that you know uh make the work with pleasure and sell the work with pleasure in a way that 
you know the person buying it is also happy uh, values your work uh, and let it be reasonable let it reach as many homes and um, you know let as many people enjoy it as possible first rather than thinking of um, you know kind of grasping or trying to gauge for too much out of one work and always remember you're the artist you can produce as many number of works you can you know prove your work as much as possible so don't put too much value on to every piece that you make you know part of being an artist and this is something i learned when i was doing my internship uh, last year in pottery and ceramics was that don't ever get too attached to your artworks you know or to your pieces um because you're going to part with it and you're going to make more works and better works so don't be too critical of the pricing as well thanks a lot uh, prachi i just want to uh, add on to that uh, like uh, purvi said it's something you have to be clear about as to why you're selling it um one thing to keep in mind though is material cost so that you can produce another art if you're using a certain amount of paint and brushes and things like that just make sure you're at, at the very least yes. covering that cost to be able to produce another art if you want to keep doing it if it's a one off thing that you're doing and you're like okay i've got it out of my system i don't want to paint again then price it at whatever range you want it doesn't matter but if you know that okay i've made one painting i'd like to keep doing this have a baseline so that you know that i will be able to buy more paints more brushes and the more you then sell and the more you want to then up the quality of materials you will also be able to manage that in a much more even manner believe me as somebody who has always paid out of pocket without taking money from anyone else to buy art materials expense as hell okay a, a 500 ml jar of white paint that used to cost 350 rupees a decade ago today costs almost 900 rupees same company same product same bottle prices are through the roof yeah so you have to just make sure that you are able to afford the materials to make the artwork whatever it is what don't worry about how much material you're using yeah, just what about do the your... artwork like she said for pleasure yeah, yeah what about okay. uh, about the okay. uh, clients who who are get into negotiation and okay. you know you can't justify your art it's very subjective how do you like deal with that uh so from my experience there have been two types of negotiating clients the one yeah. who is really intent on getting the work done and has a budget they'd like to spend um which you can negotiate really well with because they'll be able to say okay given the amount of pressure and time and effort that goes into making a particular style of artwork here's what i'm willing to accept within my price range that i can afford right you also have the other type that will that have approached me and said i want uh, can you give me your framed watercolor painting for 500 rupees right now an artist also has to live has to buy materials has to eat and drink and do things so there will always be one type of person who will go extreme with their negotiation the best thing for you to do at that moment is if you can let go of that argument and just move on to something else more important do it it's not worth your time it's not worth your effort it's not worth your sanity and you'd rather use that time to actually make another painting right um so take care of yourself as an individual as well in that negotiation do not go below a certain baseline that you know you need to achieve uh, like what we were saying like do it for the pleasure of it if you're not happy with that negotiation end it it's not worth it i've learned this Then how do you way. upscale yourself like when you are trying to upscale you know after decades of doing certain kind of work you would definitely want to upscale your pricing or now you know your maturity has increased as far as your work is concerned so then But, where you know where, when is so, the, uh, the point when you will like okay you do work for charity or you just uh, you know you know that uh, if a particular a client is really a startup and struggling and really want your work and so where do you like really put your head hands down or you you know move those on those are choices yeah. those are very individual choices uh, that you have to decide in the moment for example i've worked with people who i know are absolute gems of people okay and i knew that they would not be able to pay me what i would normally command for that kind of work that size or scale of work. um so instead we just looked at it from a barter system point of view okay. what can you pay me to cover the material cost and what else can you do for me in exchange for the rest of the cost of the painting that i would have paid you to do for me as a service right so somebody designed an exhibition brochure for me 
somebody else uh, tied me with uh, clothes from their line that they would have otherwise tossed away because of no sales i said instead give me that like i'd be happy to take that in exchange because i would have gone and spent that much anyway to buy the clothes right you're getting work i'm getting work everyone's happy and everyone's satisfied yeah so charity can also be done i'm donating my time freely to teach to do things with groups of people that i know really need that kind of interaction but may not have access to it it makes me feel good and that's a choice i'm making so it comes down to what kind of choices you want to make what kind of negotiations you want to enter into and for upscaling if you're comfortable having made a certain amount of money from a certain price range and you feel like okay i know i'm worth a lot more now because of the time i've put in because of the materials that i want to use the kind of work i want to produce at that moment you can decide and say okay i'm going to go up a little bit it's always prudent to go up a little bit and not a lot if you double the price immediately you're asking for trouble then you're stuck at that level and people may not be able to afford you it's still good to raise it bit by bit by bit read the market see what people are capable of spending at that moment in time just because people have money does not mean they will spend it you have to be able to convince them to spend a certain amount for your work so you so have to be saying to always think that okay um, i keep at this price point for whatever reasons uh, reasonable for myself and i have my justification for that but then and also if people can afford it they'll really uh, if they value it or afford it they'd come to me and i'm okay with it so would that be a same kind of a, a approach or uh, or what are your takes on it yeah you'd always rather quote on the slightly higher end um hmm. and keep a room for negotiation towards your baseline that you know you want to make out of that project anyway so if you know that the client can afford it you can pitch a little bit higher to them um but you can always negotiate down to whatever they are also comfortable with without losing any integrity at your end okay uh, i yeah, am but i would only please please if you want to add anything yeah i was just saying but uh, you know be reasonable always i mean it's it's okay to think that people who really like your work will come to you but you have to be very much informed about what's going on and have a very good idea about um you know your niche because i'm assuming that you're not uh, connected to a gallery and or art dealer which is why you are having to price the works individually and speak to the clients directly right in that case uh, you know you may need to guide yourself and speak to a few people and get a better idea of where you stand because you in terms of pricing the gallerist or the art dealer will guide you and give you a bit more of a feel about what's going on and you know um how much that person might be able to pay you and like it's i would not say it's completely okay to think okay someone likes my work they'll come to me because what happens there is you're closing the room for conversation i would never think that's a good thing you know so leave that little bit room for conversation and even if someone is haggling with you understand the person's point of view and then put your point of view and and then see if the person is being reasonable or not and how an understanding might be met never close the door completely unless you know it's a it's a definite waste of your time and maybe someone's just window shopping or trying to you know like understand things but they're not really intending to buy but if if you are an independent artist you need to put that much more effort to really gain knowledge of where you stand what the market is like and it's a it's a very tricky thing actually the whole price thing and um, one good way would be explain yourself you know go that extra mile communicate with people give them that extra bit of time and explanation because maybe that's what that person needs to understand and appreciate your work and 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 reason out why they have to pay a little bit more than last year or the year before i think uh, very well said purvi because it's again depends on your judgment the way you want it to take it up and also at the same time uh, you you take the step of educating someone making someone aware about who you are and why why you are asking why why the pricing is that way so at the end of the day the person who wants to buy something may not buy or may buy it it is it's a different question altogether but the person at the end of the day will go back getting aware of what the art scene is all about what what he needs to do if he has to need yes to art product i think that's that's very uh, rightly said and uh, i think uh, 
if any one of you have any more questions i will request all of you to uh, just write a direct message in our in any of our social media handles whether it's the facebook or our instagram or if you are a part of one piece spotlight you can write over there and i'm sure our panelists will be very happy to respond to you as well and we'll take your questions to them and see that we connect that's where the whole objective of one piece spotlight is all about connecting each and every one of you and be uh, play the role of a catalyst over here it's been a wonderful um, afternoon of talking with all of you thank you very much all our uh, panelists it's and we are really really honored and thank you very much for your time I would like to share with you that art never bazaar is opening the doors on the 18th of december in the coming month and it will be a month long celebration till the 14th of january where artists and artisans and art lovers from all across the globe will join and please join us at one piece spotlight and be a part of it we look forward to welcome all of you on the 18th of december and please stay connected with us and as we bring in more such informations connective stories and talks about art artists and all of you together thank you very much once again for being such a wonderful audience as well as to all our viewers who will be watching this session in the coming days uh, thank you very much all of you for being a part of it thanks once again thank you thank you thank you, thank you as well and thank all you. the very best to you thank you thank you thank, thank you thank for you. organizing this meeting